This screencast is just a very quick overview of using a visual editor called Pingendo. Now, Pingendo is a visual editor that lays up a framework using drag and drop methods for Bootstrap. Now, if you're not familiar with Bootstrap, it's a framework very similar to a number of other frameworks. Another popular one is Foundation. You go to getbootstrap.com and you would download all the resources. Now, what it is, it you need to have some familiarity with HTML and CSS and have an idea of how websites should be constructed to get the best out of using a framework like this. Now it does have really, really good documentation and if we click on components, on here it shows you all the components that are available that you can use. Now what it would be is once you've downloaded this, you would normally go into the code and delete and cut and amend and add to it. Now to use it straight out of the box as it is, your website might look a bit samey. To get the best out of it, you might have to customize it to change things around, but it's a really useful tool, these frameworks to get up and running and do things really, really quickly. Now you will need to have some knowledge about how to cut and paste this code and where to put it. And this is where these visual editors um, come into their own. Now, what you would need to do is go to bootstrap.com and make sure you're familiar with all these components so you can see how they work and what they look like and what the options are because these visual editors are just laying this up so you need to have an idea of how it's going to lay up and how it works. Okay, so there is a good article here which is on bootstrapbay.com um, it's been done in October 2014 so reasonably new and it gives you a list of seven visual editors for bootstrap now as it's saying you just it's just for rapid development what you are doing is sort of drag and dropping and laying it up quite quickly and having a little bit more structure that belongs to you rather than something that you just get straight out of the box with bootstrap as we said before now you will need to then further develop that to change things around. It doesn't do absolutely everything. It's just a quick way of laying it out and you probably might have to go into the code and change things around to customize it and make it your own. Now a number of the ones on here um, are either free or have some free functionality which is limited. Okay, a lot of them here are for working in teams and different things to do with hosting and serving. So the prices vary. Now, uh, interesting ones down the bottom are two, which is called Layout It, which again is free. You can down, you can use it online, um, and then download what you've created using drag and drop elements. And the other one right at the bottom here, which we're going to have a look at, because you can download the program and use it, and you can use it on various platforms, which we'll look at in a minute. And it's called Pingendo. Uh, Pingendo, I think it's been developed for a couple of years now. It's The current version is uh, 2.0 and it is also used as Bootstrap for 3. So it's really quite interesting. Um, there's not a lot of documentation about it, so it's a bit of sort of fumbling around to see how it works. Some bits seem to be a little still a bit glitchy and in development, but it is a really, really excellent um, program to use as a visual editor for Bootstrap. Now you'll need to go to the pingendo.com and once you get there, there's not a lot on the, the, the site. Um, it doesn't give you a lot of information. It gives you some ideas about the developers. Um, it does link to a Twitter, which can give you a bit of information on the, again, there's some tutorials you can find on YouTube but they appear to cover um, the early stages of the development of this program and not really the current one, which is, seems to have come out on the 2nd or, the, sorry, the 4th of March. Okay, so what you will need to do is download it. Now, the good thing is it has for Mac, it has for Windows, and also it has for Linux. So what you would do is click on here and you would download uh, Pingendo and then install it on, in this case, I'm putting it on a Mac. Now with anything you bring from the internet, you might find that there may be issues of installing it. And this is the case for um, the Apple Mac. 
Now, what you would do is you might have to unlock um, here in the system preferences, and I've gone to the um, security and privacy, and once you've unlocked that with your password, it'll have allow app downloads from Mac App Store, Mac App Store, identified developers, and anywhere. You need to have anywhere to install this program. Once you've installed it, you might need to go back here and turn that off for safekeeping. Okay, so once it's downloaded, you've installed it, and you're becoming familiar, or you have the components on Get Bootstrap. Um, dot com website open somewhere though so you can get sort of documentation of how everything's going to be laid up all your components you're good to go now a good idea when you're making a website obviously is to create a, a site folder i've created my site folder and inside there i've got a number of components which in my images folder which are images i've scaled images for my uh, carousel banner also i've got a favicon that's been scaled appropriately and saved with the ICO um, extension. Okay, so I'm up, I'm running, and what I will need to do is I will once I've installed Pingendo, I need to open it up. Now the first thing you have is you have this page that appears. I will just drag it out and make this a little bit bigger. Now once I'm here, it just says click to create a new page. Now it gives you three options. One, a default blank page. It has a landing page which has some artifacts on there that you can rearrange. I'm gonna really sort of leave that. And then over here it has, um, if you can submit your own um, themes, once you create them, that's what you do. When you move things around, you're creating new themes and new styles. I'll just go for the blank page. Okay, it comes up here and I've got untitled up at the top. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to file and I will have a save document. All right. Now I need to navigate to where my folder was, which is my site. And I'm just gonna call this, cause this is my index, which is my home page. I type in index and I click it. Now it says index.html, it's added that. If I wanna see the folder, I can click up here and it shows me my site folder so it knows that that's uh, my site folder. Now we'll just go around and look at the interface. Up at the top menu um, bar, it doesn't have a lot going on. It has a file menu where you open and also you save as HTML less, which will save the cascading style sheets. I've had a few problems with that. It sort of saved the style sheet um, that's associated with the HTML document and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong there, but I had got it to work and then sometimes it doesn't. So you might have to cut and paste it and do it separately, but that might be something I'm doing wrong. Then we have our edit. Uh, again, basic stuff it has in there. Then it has themes where you can upload themes that have been created uh, and keep on amending them. It's got a bit of a help but again, there's not a lot of help and documentation at present. Now, when we look at the interface, down the sides, we've got sections. And sections will put headers on there, which will have navigation bars. Then we've got components, which will add column structures with information on. So we can come along here and drag bars on if we wanted to. Also, we can come on here and drag sections that we can add to. It's got carousels, it's got forms, also, it's got empty sections, so we can drag these on and we can actually populate these and fill them on to create our own structures. So these work as just blocks that can be filled and edited. Then we have the components, and these are the components. We have typography, so once we've had a component, we can drag and drop these. It's got page headers, block quotes, you can add code, horizontal rules, media, you can add images on there, and then you can link them. This is just a placeholder. Um, to the actual images on there. I'll just get rid of these uh, components on there. And then you can put YouTube videos, uh, maps, Google Maps, you've got pages, navigation bar, pagination, um, other components to do with list groups, panels, modals, which you can pop up. Then it's got different types of buttons that you can put on there and customize those buttons, including you know, drop downs, also you can put forms on here. So it's got lots and lots of different things you can do, containers that you can put on the page and fill up with other 
components or sections. Right, so they're the sort of the features that actually exist down the side. Now, anything you've got here, if you go over to the left side, you have pages, which we'll look at in a minute, and then it has uh, settings. Now, the settings, you select a component, and you can change those around, how you have the sizes, you can change colors, uh, what they're set at, change active states, um, you can change a lot of different things on the sizes, how it toggles. Also has these on all of these where you can turn them off. Now it's re responsive. So if we come along here and click on the small screen, it will move it down and show you that. So say for example, if I didn't want to have this button here showing, I could then hide it on the small screen. When it's a large screen, it's there. I go for the small screen, it's not. The other screens, um, the size is on. So it can do responsive design because Bootstrap is responsive. So that's a pretty cool thing to happen. Um, then once we've got that over the side here, it's got the theme. This is just picking it up from Bootstrap. So these will all have themes laid up. Again, you can customize these, but you know we'll just leave these things as they are. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do now is on the right, I'm up here, I'm going to uh, put a page title. So I'll just give the name of the site, uh, Joe Doe. Up there, you can put some uh, meta description words. You can put some keywords in there if you wish. Ideally, you know, I'm looking towards using this as just a, a mock-up tool rather than making an actual website. But, you know, you can do everything properly and have a website you can upload and use online. Down at the bottom, this is where you put the favicon. So I would click on here. I've created a favicon so that to uh, 48 pixel square and it's got an ICO extension, and I click there, and it will link to that Fabicon. Again, every time you do something, you give you a little asterisk up at the top to say you need to save it. Now, if I click up here, uh, up at the top, this is a site folder, and here it is, it's showing my index on there with my files. Now, this will take a screen capture of whatever you're doing. If that's what you want to do, just take a snapshot, Again, these, what we just looked for, will show you um, how responsive your design is. And again, Bootstrap is responsive, so you might need to do minimal editing on that, only turn things on and off. Um, then also, you've got all the things to do with bold and your text and creating links up at the top. You can save, you can um, open, and you can create new documents. Now, we've got that set up, okay? That's just a basic overview of what Pingendo is, how it integrates with Bootstrap, how to download it, how to get it going, and the functionality of the workspace. I've created some other screencasts which show you how to start building those components into a website concept.